Now let's go ahead and jump into some of the individual sections on this vocoder to show you how they work and how they can be used to create some interesting sounds for your productions. The sections we'll be taking a look at are going to be the carrier synth section and also this resynthesis area as well. These are kind of the main oscillator sections of the synth that enable you to create various different types of sounds and to generate different types of waveforms. So you can either have this set up as a effects processor like we have here, where you set the pitch based on the note data that you have on this keyboard, or you could set it up via MIDI. We'll be showing both off in this video because there's a couple of different controls based on how you have this set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is routed in. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the vocoder is routed as the MIDI track here. There we go. So now we can go ahead and control that via MIDI if we'd like. Go ahead and set that up inside of your GAW, however you route a MIDI track to a instrument device. But in Ableton, that's how you have that set up. Okay, so these sounds so far just sounds like this. And even though we have those different notes being fed into our sequence from the vocal, it's all playing at a C note, which is what we have set right here. So the first control that we have is going to be this octave control. This will enable us to adjust the octave of the vocoder sequence. I can go up an octave for a higher pitch sound, or I can go down to where we were previously, or go down to zero, much lower sound, or go quite a few octaves down depending on the source material that I'm working with. So this is nice because it enables us to quickly kind of get to the main octave range that we want to work with for our sound. And especially if we're just using this keyboard down here and we're not feeding any MIDI data into this, this could be super nice to just kind of quickly jump between various different octaves. The next section that we have is going to be these oscillators over here, the various different waveforms that we could select on the right. So the first one is going to be the saw wave, which gives us a really nice saw wave that actually has this almost warm harmonic quality to it. This sounds really nice whenever blended into my vocal here. The next one's going to be a saw wave has a very nice resonant hollow tone to it. And then the third one is going to be more for special effects. This is going to be the noise waveform. It sounds a bit wild in this case with this vocal, but it can sound cool depending on what type of sound you're creating, especially if you're trying to create some sort of ambient sounds, especially if you want to create something sort of spooky sounding. This noise waveform on the vocoder could be a lot of fun. The next control is going to be that pulse wave, and this is nice because we can adjust the individual width of that pulse. So it gives us actually a lot of customization for this waveform. So you can hear with this waveform, we actually get quite a bit of variety based on what we have selected for that pulse width. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to the saw because that's one of my favorites on the synthesizer, but feel free to select any of these going forward with this video. The next two controls we have in the middle are going to be the attack and decay parameters. These enable us to create various different fade ins or fade outs for the different notes that I feed into my vocoder. Now these only work for MIDI whenever MIDI data is fed into this device. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have our MIDI sequence set up. So the MIDI right here is routed to our vocoder. Let's go ahead and just create like a simple arpeggio pluck pattern to show this off. And let's just grab a couple of notes and I'll just create like something super simple. Uh, just like a simple triad chord with a seventh on top. So it's like this. There we go. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and change it here in a moment so that way it's not playing those notes in between. Let's go ahead and go back to our vocoder. I want to turn off C and turn off transpose chord. So now this section down here at the bottom of this keyboard is not controlling the pitch of my synth, just the incoming note data is. It sounds like this. So the first parameter that we have is going to be this decay parameter. This is going to add a fade out to the different notes that we play into my sequence. It essentially kind of acts like a release parameter. This especially gets really interesting once we have a really long decay. Because the synth is polyphonic, we start getting all these really interesting artifacts from the vocal formats overlapping. And that could be really interesting in a production to get a really cool texture that you wouldn't normally get out of a synthesizer. Or we can make plucks that are super short. So you can set that anywhere in between depending on the type of sound you want. The next parameter is going to be the attack parameter, which is going to add a fade in to my sound. This can be especially nice if you're trying to create some sort of polyphonic pad. So let's go ahead and remove that MIDI and create some sort of chord information. Let's maybe try just a simple triad here. Go ahead and remove those notes. 
And you could also feed this in live as well inside of Ableton. So you could technically enable this and just play in information. I just want to show it this way so you could see all the chords that I'm working with. So you can hear that that's now doing a nice chorded sequence. We could add some fade. Now we have more of like a pad sound. So this is where you're going to get a lot of control over that incoming MIDI information and it enables you to create all sorts of cool musical sequences. The next parameter that we have down here at the bottom is going to be the root section. This will enable us to change the different notes inside of a sequence. So we can either use this just as kind of a way to create note information or chords, or we can create chord patterns and transpose them around inside of my sequencer. If I just turn on note C, I want to go ahead and turn on transpose chord as well. Now we get a C note, then we could have an E note and get a cool chord. And now it gives me chord data, even though we're not feeding any MIDI into my sound. Now, the interesting thing about this is I actually have the option to go ahead and transpose this information around. So let's go ahead and create a new MIDI clip here. Let's play a C note. And we can move that note around to take that same triad and to play it on different notes. So that enables you to create some cool chord sequences just by playing around with those different notes inside your sequencer. So it's a really nice and creative way of creating some more advanced patterns. So you can create some cool musical sequences rather quickly using that different transpose controls using the transpose controls, and then also incoming MIDI information. Okay, so for now, we're going to go ahead and turn off the chord here. Just keep that on C, so that way it is nice and simple. And then we could talk about the resynthesis section. So the resynthesis window shows all the different active bands that are inside of your vocoder. So right now we have this set to 16 bands, and we can see all 16 of those bands. These gaps in between them are basically just the inactive bands. So if I swap this around, you can see there's different gaps between them depending on how many bands are playing. This will give us different types of vocoder sounds. You get more of the kind of watery sounds with higher numbers of bands. And you get these more kind of hollow sounds with less bands like four. So this enables you to really shape the overall tonality of your vocoder patch. So this is a really nice way of kind of changing the texture of your sounds. You also have the option to adjust the individual levels of these bands. So I could take these controls and basically kind of just paint across them to create my own custom curves. So maybe more of a low frequency focus, maybe some high frequency focus, and then maybe kind of have those mids be nice and scooped. Maybe scoop just a little bit more of those mids. So that enables me to have really interesting custom sounds. You can even have it kind of roll off just in those lows. Kind of give you more of a high frequency focus tone with less lows. Then we have these three different controls here, the emphasis, spectral tilt, and shape control. The emphasis is going to be how steep the response of each of these bands is to the resynthesis part of the synthesizer. So basically, if you just increase this, it'll make the sound a little bit more hollow. We kind of lose a little bit of that mid-range presence. The next control is going to be the spectral tilt. You can kind of think of this like a filter. If I put this over to the left, we get more of a focus on those mid-range and low-end frequencies. You can even see this visually represented on this resynthesis section. Or if I turn this to right, it's going to be the opposite of that. It sort of removes some of those low-end frequencies and focuses more of the resynthesis section on those highs. So this is helpful because you could shape the overall character of your whole patch. Then the final control that we have is going to be the shape control. This is an envelope control for the main resynthesis part. As I increase this, it kind of creates more of a sloppy effect and gives us a new sound for our vocoder. So it gives us more of a decay on my sound. It's less like detailed where these bands are more rapidly responding to incoming frequency information from my vocal, 
as it increases up, those bands become a little bit slower and a little bit sloppier, giving us a bit more of like a vintage style vocoding. So it makes it sound a little bit more like a regular synthesizer rather than a really detailed vocoder. So by changing these around, you can get a lot of different options for your sounds. You can go through and filter it, maybe kind of hollow things out, and then have it be a little bit slower so it's a bit more synthetic with maybe less bands. So there's a lot of different customizable options between these different sections. These kind of act as your main sound generators and different ways of modifying that main sound for your vocoder patches. Okay, so that's all for the carrier section and the resynthesis controls. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.